In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build the best $1,000 gaming PC you can put together right now. With GPU prices crashing at a tremendous rate, there hasn't been a better time to build a gaming PC in ages. I'll be running you through all the components I've selected for this build and of course why, showing you how to assemble it step by step from start right through to finish before booting the PC up at the end and seeing just how well it performs. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Do it. The latest range of Zotac Z-Box mini PCs allow you to get gaming right away in a super compact form factor. With the latest RTX 3060, 3070 and 3080 notebook GPUs, these certainly pack a punch and their bare bones nature means you can spec them up with whatever storage and memory you see fit. Check out our dedicated video featuring one of the Z-Box PCs or learn more at the links below. As with all of our builds, we're going to kick things off by looking at some of the core components first up. This includes our motherboard, our CPU or processor, the M.2 SSD storage, and the RAM or the memory. Let's begin specifically though with of course our motherboard and CPU first of all. As you've probably guessed already, we've gone for an Intel approach in this build, utilising the brand new Intel 12th Gen CPU platform. The new Intel 12th Gen processors are phenomenal and the performance you're able to achieve is quite frankly mild better than what we've seen before. It's nice to see Intel make such a big comeback and the rumour are that AMD aren't too far behind when they launch their next gen Ryzen 7000 chips. But these Intel processors, they've got one key upside no one's really talking about. These chips actually support DDR4 and DDR5 memory. The new Ryzen CPUs won't, making them a bad bet for budget gamers, at least for now. DDR4 memory is so much cheaper. So pick yourself up a 12th gen chip like the i3-12100 or for some more performance, an i5 12400F. Both are going to work relatively well for this build, one saving you a little more money than the other. And as always, we'll link all the various options for parts and all that good stuff in the description below. These chips also come with a great stock cooler, which we can install nice and easily by just clicking in each corner and adding in the fan header. Obviously, an aftermarket cooler is going to be way better for temperatures and allow you to overclock, but our chip is non-overclockable anyway, and it saves us some money, which we can pour into the GPU a little bit later. Now we're not going to look at the GPU yet. We still need of course to cover off our RAM and our SSD. This is a 16 gigabyte kit of Corsair's Vengeance RGBRT. They also do an RS and a normal pro kit either's going to work fine. It's 16 gigs, 8 gig dims in total, giving us room for upgrades later, and up to 32 gigs of memory. And the white aesthetic is going to match quite nicely with our build. The two-tone black and white design is always a pleasant addition. We'll be using the grey slots on our Gigabyte B660 DS3H motherboard today to install the RAM into place, which we can do nice and easily. Make sure your Corsair logos are facing away from the CPU, Click your memory in with a bit of pressure on either side, and that's all there is to it. Your RAM is now going to receive data and pass power through the RAM DIMM slot on the motherboard. The final part of the motherboard assembly is adding in the storage. This is the Samsung SSD 980. Not the 980 Pro, the 980 Evo, just the normal bog standard 980. With read speeds up to 3.5 gigabytes a second though, it's going to perform admirably well. And with it being an M.2 drive, it's very, very easy to go ahead and install. No complicated SATA cables or anything that business. What you need to do is you need to take a look out for the M.2 slot on your motherboard. First it's just here below the stock cooler. Slide the drive in at sort of a 45 degree angle like so and then push it down into place. We're going to use one of the included teeny tiny screws to secure it down and once we've done that the motherboard assembly is basically complete. We can then go ahead and take a look at the PC case choice for the build. Now, picking a great case is not always the easiest of decisions, but luckily we've made a guide rounding up our favourite chassis of 2022. This is the Lancol 215. It's available in black or white. I've gone for white for something just a bit different. It's got loads of mesh on the front, hence the name, two large fans, a bit of RGB and a tempered glass side panel. Make sure the case you go for supports fairly long graphics cards, full-size ATX motherboards, and of course, any liquid cooling radiators 
radiators you might want to install at a later date. This case is a personal favourite of mine though, given its affordability and great value price tag. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unbox the case, strip all the side panels back and lay it flat on the table, as that will make installing the motherboard, which is the next step today, so much easier. Once we're in this position, we can then go ahead and locate all of the standoff holes on the motherboard. That's these holes that go through the motherboard and allow for the installation of the board itself. You'll notice we've got nine and these need to match up exactly, I cannot stress this enough, exactly with the standoffs in the case. So if I grab my handy pointer of doom, aka scissors, you'll see we've got one, two, three at the top, three along the middle, and then whoa, 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 there's some in the wrong spot. This could be bad. We've got one here, one here. They are no bueno, senor, wrong location. They need to move down to the bottom here to match up perfectly. If they don't, you can cause some major damage. So grab yourself a pair of pliers and begin unscrewing your standoff. This could take some time, but once you've loosened them off, your thumb will finish the job nicely. Once the motherboard's in, we can slide the case to one side and take a look at the graphics card choice for this build, which I think we can install with the case laid flat. This right here is the Aorus RTX 3060. A fantastic GPU for gaming at 1080p, maximum settings, and always achieving 60 frames or more. In reality, you're likely to be hitting the 100 frames per second or above mark more than you are the 60. This is one of Nvidia's finest GPUs ever. Yes, it's not as powerful as a 3080, obviously, but it's a lot cheaper. And with prices starting to rocket downwards, and in some regions, especially here in the UK, MSRP levels already being achievable, this is actually a system you can build on budget. Something I never thought I'd be able to say just six months ago. Now, if we go ahead and unbox the card, you'll see that our unit today comes in on Gigabyte's higher end Aorus range. Now, this is arguably a little bit overkill for what we're doing today, but I think the card looks phenomenal and all the extra RGB and gizmos here and there are certainly gonna do a good job of adding a unique aesthetic edge to the system. Plenty of video memory, support for ray tracing, DLSS, you name it, this card has got it. Take a look at some of the benchmark numbers we've run on your screen now. It shows that across the latest titles at 1080p, this card has got it covered. Games like Fortnite in particular work incredibly well. Here we achieved an impressive 222 frames per second on average when tested out in competitive settings to get the maximum possible frame rate. The good news continued in Forza Horizon 5 where we picked up 85 frames per second on average, tested at 1080p high settings using the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode. Game Games like Apex also perform well, more than 150 frames per second at 1080p high in this popular EA title, while COD Warzone also pulled in some great numbers, 112 frames per second to be precise, when testing with our beautiful 3060 Ti. When it comes to installing the GPU, there are a couple of things you need to check. You'll notice here we've got this nice gold slot. That's what's going to connect up to the PCI lane on the motherboard. You always want to use the first X16, the first large form factor slot. Hover the card over the slot, don't go ahead and install it just yet, as doing so will actually show us that we've got an extra PCI slot in the way and that we don't need the top one to be removed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna swap those round, then slot the GPU into place with a satisfying sound and secure it in with the included thumb screws. We'll add our power cables in just a moment when we round things off with the power supply. The power supply I've selected is this nice little Corsair CX750F unit. It's actually white with white cables, which I think will look quite nice in the build today and provides plenty of wattage for our current setup and any configurations later on down the line. It's easy to install as well, just pop it in the back of the case and screw it into place. Remember to install the modular cables that we need, that includes the motherboard, CPU, GPU and a SATA power harness for this build. Once your power supply is in, these can all go to their respective areas on the motherboard, starting with the CPU in the top left, motherboard on the right hand side, GPU to the middle of our Aorus RTX 3060, and finally a SATA power connection to the back panel of the motherboard to power up the RGB controller for the fans and lit up logo. It's not looking awful, but I think I might add some custom sleeve cable extensions. I'll leave these easy DIY fab cable options linked below as well, as I think they'll just look a bit better than the white ones that come included. To wrap things up, remember to plug in your front panel cable comprised of your JFP1, they're the fiddly pins but will pop a diagram on your screen now, your USB and of course your HD audio to power up the headphone and mic jacks. And with that we're pretty much done. To finish things off we're going to boot the PC up and see just how good it looks, ending with an awesome glam montage. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy that montage. I just want